A few administrative notes. Number one, I am black. I know, I know, some of you are doing that thing where you're like, one of these is not like the other. I'm black. Number two, my mom is in the audience. I don't know where she is, but if you have any questions about number one, you can refer them to her. <laughs> and number three, and most importantly, my dress has pockets. <laughs> and if you know how that feels, then you know pockets bring a crazy amount of joy. Joy, joy saved my life. And honestly, joy not only saved my life, but it saved the lives of those around me. You can refer any questions you have about that to my ex-husband. <laughs> Listen, we have all become insanely good at doing what I think is like presenting life, right? We get dressed, we do the hair, we do the makeup, we go to the job, we drive the nice car, we take the pictures, we post the pictures. And all the while, so many of us are the walking dead. Now, I understand this concept because I did this for a very long time. Now, I don't really think I understood that I was the walking dead because everyone around me was doing it so well. But here's the thing. Before we get too far into joy, let's just define it. I want to talk a little bit about what joy is and what joy is not. Joy is a gift from God. Now listen, I know we're a diverse group with diverse backgrounds and belief systems, but my only point is that you get access to joy when you are connected to the divine. Joy is not an emotion. It is not happiness or sadness or grief or excitement because those things are dependent on circumstances. Now, friends, let me tell you about my circumstances. I am a 43 and a half year old black woman who is very single. I uh, am divorced. I am raising two medium-sized humans with very little help from their father. I live with my mom. I drive an old car. My bank account looks funny sometimes because I'm an entrepreneur. I don't own a home. I literally do not have a thing that the modern world says I should have. If you looked at my life under a microscope, you might wonder, sis, is she okay? But I experience joy. I am filled with joy despite the things that are happening to me. Now let me tell you how I got to be here with you all today. I was born in America. And in America, we do this amazing thing where we tell young women over and over in a variety of ways, the most important thing you can do is get married. <laughs> now listen, I grew up a part of the girl power generation. So when I understood this was the task, I was going after it. I got me a boyfriend at 14 years old. And let me tell you, I did not stop having a boyfriend until one of those boyfriends said he would marry me. And when I got engaged, I thought, oh, I've made it. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be complete. This man is going to just fix my whole life. Now, a side note. God talks to me. Now, I don't always listen, but he does talk to me. There are two times that I can think of that he spoke to me so clearly. The first time was when I was 12 years old. God told me that when you turn 40, your life is going to be amazing. Okay, so put, put a pin in that. Then, when I got engaged, do you know what God said to me? He said, this is not for you. <laughs> and do you know what I told God? <laughs> I said, yes, it is. <laughs> and so there I was in Turks and Caicos, beautiful location, my mother and father flanking me on each side, a beautiful white dress. And as I started walking down that aisle, a pain in my gut. And I just remember thinking, well, if it doesn't work out, we can always get a divorce. Spoiler alert, it did not work out. And those same beautiful parents that walked me down the aisle had to fly from Dallas, Texas to Miami, Florida to literally rescue me and my small children from the man and the marriage I thought I could control. This was 2015, and I remember coming home to Dallas and literally laying on the floor of my childhood bedroom and thinking, this is the worst that it gets. <sighs> my friends, sometimes the worst it gets is the best it can go to. 
Because that ending, that death that I had on that floor, it birthed in me something that I did not think existed. The version of me that's standing in front of you now, I did not think was possible. In the process of picking myself up off the floor and healing, God gave me a scripture. He gave me James 1-2. Count it all joy. So my friends, I now look at that divorce, the worst thing that ever happened to me, and I see it as the blessing that allowed the woman who's standing in front of you to be with you today. So we only have two questions we can ask. Why is this happening to me? Or what are you trying to teach me? My friends, we are all going to die. How many of us are going to choose to live? Joy be with you, friends.